Welcome everyone, thank you for watching me, it sucks at games. It is not Friday, it's technically Sunday, but we got some catching up to do, so let's go ahead and cover what was just happening on May 15th. My apologies also for being late. Also, uh, yeah, I am getting a little ill, so my apologies on that. Today, folks, we're not doing this for anything regarding Twitch, we're doing straight to YouTube, so great news is I'm not going to ramble as much, maybe, possibly. So let's jump straight into it, talk about what you might have missed. First up right now from Splatoon. Splatoon hype is real, folks. My god. Just recently, Nintendo was holding a special online demo of the anticipated Wii U title, as well as hosting an event with attendees along with some celebrities uh, to get their own real life Splatoon action on. Very messy event. Very messy. And people are already clamoring for collectibles from this playful, playful, playful uh, splattering paint game. So if you're looking for something, San A. Boaki has something for you. You can squish it with your own hands. A pair of squid cushions available in orange and lime green. With a logo on the back there. Something something to remind you what game it's from, in case you've forgotten. As you may uh, may have seen from the mall here, there, these are some rather large squids to, to squeeze, measuring almost 14 inches in height. Something nice to hold on to and not be messy. That's the good part. Unless you spill something on it. You got, you got yourself a uh, deal with Look for these squids to invade your arms in July. Now, moving from literally squishy squidness, we'll move on to... Uh, <sighs> more schoolgirls. All right, Colt Bukia, what do you have for me? Oh. Oh. Um. Oh. Uh, hi. God. Oh, I am such a dumb sucker sometimes. Colt Bukia will be releasing a pretty lovely 1-8 scale or seven and a half inch tall figure of the cheerful Yui Gahama Yui from my teen romantic comedy Snafu. It's all cavalier, so you gotta make sure you get a little uh, uh, motion behind that. I'll just get out of the way right now. Honestly, what captured my eyes when I first saw this figure were the folds of her school vest, the way it wraps around her stomach. This is, there's just something I really like regarding the details and the way it naturally folds around her body. Except for that, that's 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 a dog. <laughs> Uh, this is something that I just really uh, like regarding the details and the way, and just it's just you know from a distance. Uh, I say Yui still captures my attention. The different kind of pose that has her leaning against a chair with her hand pressed against her face. I do have to mention the the sweet smile also uh, she carries. Uh, Joyce, so happy. God, that sweater, <laughs> sweater vest. We want to call it. As much as I like the way her vest wraps around her stomach and waist, uh, the way it follows the curves of her breasts. Uh, it looks a little unnatural, a little unnatural, but that's to be expected, unfortunately. Just, you know, it's one of those things about honor making, such as. Another complaint I have, though, is I, I like Yui's hairstyle, but when you get up close to the figure, you, you see how the mold just clumps together, some very rough edges, making it poor in appearance, which is really surprising, because usually, you know, these things are a little better, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on with the uh, QA there, but... Yeah. It's really disappointing though, because I mean, it's a, it's a cute figure, but at the same time, also with the sucker for that pink hair. I am in complete sucker mode right now. I'm like a little, little doggy. It's one of these little dorbs. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's the dorb, right? Yeah, that wiener dog. Though it's kind of funny because it looks like a claymation figure that a, uh, from a cartoon dog, but still, it's a dorbs. But at the same time, you know, aren't most cartoon dogs dorbs? So look for uh, Kotobukiya to have Yugi. I'm sorry, Yui Gahama, Yui, available in October to bring that cheer. Perfect figures has all the Chaos Emeralds and is going super sonic again. This time they are producing a 16 and a half inch tall. So that's over one foot, folks. Actually, almost over one and a half. Yeah, so, uh, using a very tall super sonic based on Sonic's modern art style. Two versions uh, are being released, limited to quantities. There's a regular version limited to 1,500 pieces. And the exclusive version, which is only limited to 600 pieces. But figures feature Super Sonic doing his best Super Saiyan impression, but we've known that for quite some time, uh, with a very bright yellow coating for his body as he hovers and shifts around, shifts water around his feet. If you end up getting the exclusive version, the base will include a light that brings out water as well as a shine to Super Sonic himself. 
As I say before, regarding first four figures, uh, they can produce some amazing quality statues, but when you get to more basic source material, such as Sonic here, it's, it's really hard to justify the asking price that they want. And, and the size, I just feel, the size is just really unnecessary. I can't deny it's an excellent looking figure, but at upward to $250, it's, it's a little hard for me to want to reach for my credit card to pay for that. Both versions of Force of Figures Modern Super Sonic will be available sometime in first quarter of 2016. Now, before I move on to the next figure, uh, I do need to make a correction regarding a something I said last week, or, or last time. I made a joke about uh, Medichu Mutsu by uh, Fat Company's Medichu Mutsu. We have every reason to be shy when Medichu Yamato will be released. I kind of screwed up my joke, and I meant to say Nagato because that's who Mutsu is typically paired up with. Which is really a really silly mistake, especially since that's the only couple in Kanji collection that really matters, folks. So, yeah, Super Deform. Speaking of, since we're talking about Super Deform uh, figures and Super Deform Yamato, the Good Smile Company is bringing out the big guns with Nendoroid Yamato, their biggest Nendoroid figure yet. Now, why is she the biggest? Because can you not see how loaded she is with her turrets and her ship parts? My god! Play is ready for war! Not only that, but she includes a ton of effect parts to show the firepower that she is packing. Rather impressive, but don't forget that she is a Nendoroid, so she will also include different facial expressions, additional leg parts to sit, a Ramune, an omelet or rice to drink and eat. Impressive Nendoroid figure, just like her scale figure release that came just as loaded. Though Yamato's scaled figure was a Lady of Beauty, her Nendoroid figure is definitely one of cuteness. As a bonus, if you pre-order her directly from the Good Smile online shop, you'll get a special sleeve for the figure box, a special blue Nendoroid base, the Notion part, a water print on it, and Nendoroid Yamato will launch for battle in September. Now warning folks, now warning, as, as, as much as we're talking about the cuteness here, uh, things are about to get a little naughty here for our next few figure releases, so those who claim to be mature when they watch my stuff, uh, just make sure your parents aren't roaming around been warned. So let's get started with more Kantai collection. It's Yukikaze again, but she is suffering from some major damage. Mm -mm, I think. Is she? I guess so. I'm not sure. Possibly. But what can be seen is that she does have a torn shirt, which is all wet. Oh my. And see, what did I say last time? What did I say last time? Please, get this girl some pants. She wouldn't have to be tugging down on her shirt if someone just gave her some blasted pants to wear. Wouldn't be flashing her underwear like that. My God. Of course, she did have some pants. Uh, it wouldn't be again. Yeah, it wouldn't be possible to see the blanted view of her underwear from front and back. The backside having some print on it, and as well as getting a little uh, cheeky and cracky there. Though the subject matter is not something that I do like, I cannot deny the quality of the mold for binoculars, the turret, and that adorable turret bag. The eyes have some good detail, but the way the mouth is painted, it just comes off lazy. We have seen figure makers before have sculpted some amazing mouths, actually, you know, putting some depth and detail into it. And for the nearly $120 price tag that Aquamarine is asking for, you would expect that extra bit of detail. Though I'm sure it won't stop the fans from purchasing her, given her current battle state. Aquamarine's Yukikaze Major Damage version washes up in August. Now, if you thought the wet t-shirt was something, wait until you see the next release. It's a continuation of a series by Max Factory involving the ladies up to La Rue. I think, I think I've said enough right there for those who are quite familiar with that series. Uh, you might see where this is going because of that. Specifically from To La Rue Darkness, Max Factory will be releasing a 1 6th scale or 10 plus inches tall figure of Sairinji Haruna, dressed in lingerie and veil that you might find after one's wedding. This is the third in the series following Momo and Mea, two characters that happen to fit the style. Haruna, who is more innocent, shows that with her facial expression with something ridiculous as this. Speaking of ridiculous, though, let's talk about the way she's pushing out her butt and twisting, her, twisting and arcing her body. Uh, this is a common pose we've seen with anime figures and anime characters and artwork. Because that's totally how a woman stands. You know, honestly, you know, true story. All my female friends, they totally stand like that all the time. All the time. That's just, apparently, it's, it's, it's very natural in Aussie. That's why anime characters are always staying like that, too. 
there isn't really much going on for this figure. It, it's a simple design. H how do I know? The product page tells you it is. The product page specifically says this is a very simple design figure. Granted, I guess you're supposed to be focusing on the detail of the lingerie, but it's not even interesting to look at. At over $100, this figure is tough to really swallow for quality. I mean, if you really, if you really want any of you know, these figures from this collection, your your best bet is really Momo. At least she has something extra, which is her tail and flowers. And her, her hair, her hair is more interesting too. Max, Max, Max Factory's lingerie version, Haruna, will be dressing down in November. From here, we're looking at a few preview of figures uh, that will be coming later this year, but are not available for pre-order just yet. We're still talking about naughty stuff, so uh, keep that in mind. You know, it's not it's not safe. Make sure you avert the the video screen. <laughs> video screen, my God, how old am I? Any uh, lurking eyes. Next one I'm going to talk about is something naughty but surprising because it's probably the most dressed but undressed figure we'll be looking at. Based on the works of the popular Edo artist Tony Taka, who you may know from Sega's Shining series, is having another one of his pieces of art taken into the world of 3D. From Alpha's Max comes the 1 6th scale figure, Brilliant Summer Matsuki Saya, which has not loaded. <laughs> Good job, this is how we do it live. There we go. Sorry, she, she's lounging too much. Uh, Sai is laying back with her open top and pants slipping off as her squeeze bosom pushes out for bikini top. A lot going on here. A lot going on. But to be expected from something erotic. It's also hard to uh, not notice the, um, well, especially the artwork, the official artwork. It's not hard to notice the, um, <clears throat> the plot points uh, from this art that's termed figure. Tony's works have been a hit or uh, mostly miss with me. Mostly miss, especially when being made into a figure. I can't deny that the figure is looking rather exceptional and attractive from its 2D counterpart. The hair has a lot of strands sculpted into it, and the face is looking looking lovely, with some shape being put into her lower lip, which is, as I stated before, I like it when details put into lips, along with the depth to her mouth. Hopefully the eyes will look as beautiful when painted, the slipping pants folds are well done to show that you know, they're bunching up as they come off, which is which is good, which is very good. The shirt wrinkles look the, the shirt wrinkles look a bit messy, but at least they tried to capture that. Maybe the paint job will fix will help fix that up, but we'll see. Oh, by the way, I do also want to point out the the elbows, the elbows and the de detailed fingers are great. In the way the arm folds right there. Hopefully, when that's painted, that detail is not lost. Of course, since this is Alpha Max Tony Taka figure, the top will most likely be coming off. Would not be surprised. Would not be surprised. This is the way she's uh, ready to uh, burst out of it already. I can't vouch for the uh, quality of, the, of uh, Alpha Max and their <clears throat> plot points, but I'll, I'll leave that to others to judge. Since this is a pro still a prototype, no information is available yet for when Alpha Max uh, Natsuki Saya will get comfy in your collection. But keep an eye out for that. Of course, I will be sharing that with you as well. I think we need to get away from all this naughtiness. I think we're done. I think we, uh, we, we gotta look at something else. So let's move on to something a little safer for the collection. Though we can't get away from the uh, ample chest women, of course. We're back to looking at Don Machi's Boob Ribbon Hestia. Again, by Kotobukiya, previewed on Twitter, we're now getting a look at Hestia painted, and it's a figure that offers very little for her pose, and the basic outfit doesn't exactly help this figure. What it does give you is a form-fitting dress that I'm sure wraps around every curve of her body from the back, just as it does from the front. You also have her ribbon pressing up against her breasts, giving a bit of a separation between them and the ribbon. Okay, I'll give him that. I'll give I'll give Kotobuki of that. Uh, the cute Moe face will certainly win folks over, but the mouth is uh, so faint. It is so faint on there that you might as well ask what mouth, since you're also asking what nose. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe it's just the lighting. Maybe once the figure actually uh, hits the production line, they'll have that fixed. Uh, so Kotobuki is also the first to present us a figure Hestia, but I have to wonder when the other big makers will show us their hand. I'm sure if Alter were to produce a Hestia figure, it'd be more remarkable than what Kotobuki has to offer. Probably hopefully we'll have a little more action to it too. 
bustiness might be uh, to question as well. Maybe maybe they'll offer a little more in regards to that as well. I'll have to wait and see. No release or pre-order details are available at this time, but I expect to it to be popping up soon now that she has been painted. Oh, speaking of Alter being superior, uh, that's what they have done with their upcoming pre-order. From World Conquest Zezda, plot comes Alter's take on Plamia Sama, a 1-7 scale figure nearly 10 inches tall of their own. Max Factory recently had a 1-7 scale figure of, uh, of this character go up for pre-order that brought some sex appeal, but Alter's version has gone with something more playful, maybe a little more dangerous too. It's a wonderful sculpt. I, I can say that already just looking at it. But hair with lots of motion always gets me, and uh, Plemya Sama has that going for her, with it being completely wild, almost as if it's alive when you look at it from the back. The extended smile on her face has mischievous all over it, and compliment those eyes as well. Great, great mix uh, have going there. I like the paint lines on her leotard that bring out, brings out uh, more to it, along with the stretch marks along her chest. I also have to comment that Alter's release has a bit more oomph <clears throat> for chest as well, compared to what Max Factory has. Her cape is beautifully sculpted with the way it drapes off her body and rolls on the ground. The inside paint job is excellent. It just looks wonderful. It looks absolutely wonderful. It brings a lot more depth to the cape. Then there are the belts that wrap around her body with the twisting and connecting buckles. Good stuff, good stuff. There's just there's so much to appreciate up front that I actually forgot that she's actually holding a sword, which is also finely painted. There's just much to appreciate about this figure, and, and though Max Factory does have some points over uh, what Alter has to offer, such as the different faces, including one with the alluring smile that, uh, for Max Factory's release, Alter only gives you a different head that has the mask removed, and it has the same smile, so it's a bit lame. A bit lame for a different head. Pre-orders for Alter's take on Plamia, I'm sorry, uh, Plamia Sama will start on May 20th. And that's that. We're done. So we got a lot of naughtiness to look forward to. We have a lot of uh, details to look forward to. And we got a lot of squishiness to be looking forward to. Amazing stuff the times, this time. But um, if you're ready to order, if you're ready to bust out that wall and say, I gotta buy some of these things right now, be sure to check out all those imports over at AmiAmi, Hobby Search, Hobby Link Japan, JList, and Toys Logic. However, if you are looking for something, if you're looking for something in terms of the domestic products, be sure to check out uh, Big Bad Toy Store, The Toy Source, Toy Wiz, Sideshow Collectibles, and Toy Arena for that. Uh, for First Four Figures, though, uh, for their exclusive stuff, you have to go to their official website at firstfourfigures.com. And that does it, folks. It's awesome. It's great. But, you know, if you want more, if you want more, you have to keep update or just listen to a man ramble. Be sure to check me out at Sucks at Games over at Twitter, Facebook, Google+. Plus. Also catch me live at twitch.tv slash sucks at games. Or you can always just subscribe to the channel if you're on YouTube. And also on Twitch every Fridays and weekends, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll be playing some video games. For the figure news though, be sure to check out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, if I'm not sick. <laughs> Sick. So that does it, guys. I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank you for hanging out. I will see you again on Monday. Hopefully on time. Hopefully. We'll see. Try, try to keep a promise here. Try to keep a promise. I'm rambling. I'll get you out of here. Thank you, all. I'm out.